What's up, guys? All right, today we're jumping straight into it, and we are gathering references to break them down. One thing we need for references is to actually find the images that we're going to use, right? So what we're going to do is go to a classic website here, Pinterest.com. If you guys haven't used this before, it's a great source for art, um, anything really, recipes, photography. We're going to be looking at it for art and photography uh, specifically, and most notably for three-point perspective, right? So we're looking for references for our three-point perspective pictures. Um, you can type in a number of things here, but one thing you can also just type in is three-point perspective. Um, you can do photography, references, drawings, whatever you're looking for. <clears throat> I'm looking for actual buildings. You can already see we got a good picture right here. So this is essentially what we're looking for if we're looking for a bottom up picture, right? But we know perspective kind of crosses many boundaries. So, you know, you have the whole thing, you can just keep scrolling through. You see all this art as reference here. This is a good picture. <clears throat> this is a good one over here. Um, really, you can just scroll through. There's many, many options. Another option you can type in here would be And you can see here, this also has numerous amounts of pictures where you can find three-point perspective in them. Some are going to be one-point perspective, but it's kind of a good lesson for yourself to learn um, what you're looking for, you know? Um, even this picture right here has three-point perspective going on it. You can see these buildings look like they're leaning on a tilt, but we know they're not really, right? They are going straight up and down, but it's because of the viewpoint that we're getting from our three-point perspective. And then, of course, if you don't know exactly what you're looking for, and maybe you just need some inspiration, not even just photography, you can always just look up three-point perspective um, straight up. Or you can, of course, look up three-point perspective drawing and see what some other people have created, right? Um, you'll find some tutorials. You'll find some simple drawing breakdowns like this one. It's a great way to, once you learn three-point perspective and then you don't use it for a while and you need a refresher, this is a great way to kind of just be like, oh yeah, I, I totally remember. Um, and look, people are getting like super creative with it. It doesn't have to be the silly city structure that we always create, right? Um, you can do anything. So go ahead and look through this, guys. Find the pictures and the drawings and other selections that speak out to you. And print them out if you can. Put them into a digital software. And what we're going to do now is break them down and draw on them. All right, so now we have some references selected. I went through and picked out a lot, as you can see here. I have quite a few. I have mainly photography because I want to show you how we break that down. And then I have some illustrations too of how some artists have used this process as well, which hopefully will inspire you on your own choices. Um, but now's the fun part where we get to kind of draw over and trace on our, our photography, right? So here we go, classic three-point perspective picture here because we are looking down, right? So our viewpoint is going down. All these buildings are kind of um, leading to one point. So let's find our um, our third point first, which I, I'm pretty sure because of this building right here in the bottom, it's gonna be within our picture parameters here. So I'll pop out my ruler. And we're going to figure this out. All right, so as you can see, I took just a few lines. I'm not going to go through every single building here, but it's enough to know that all of these buildings, they're all converging down to that one vanishing point, which realistically, this building is pretty much telling us anyways, right there, right? Like, we're looking straight down that center building in front of us. To be three-point perspective, we also have to find our other reference points, right? So what we're going to do now is we're going to go in and we're going to find where these lines, um, like all these windows, and then these windows, where they're all going to.
All right. So if you guys watched the video before this, you can kind of see like, remember when I was talking about how our vanishing points are going to be well off of the field of our paper in order to create something realistic. So you can see if this was my paper right here, look how far away this vanishing point is. This one relatively closer, um, but this one is almost maybe two times the amount of paper away, um, which is creating that realism and not over a distorted kind of picture, right? So it gives us this image in the end and we can totally draw this image too, but we have to make sure that we're able to make a vanishing point that's all the way ending somewhere out there. All right, next reference. We have a picture again looking down at the city, but not so extreme. So I don't think our vanishing point is going to end up within this picture. But let's break it down and find out. All right, so there you go. We have our bottom vanishing point. Um, so now we have to find our other two point perspective vanishing point. I'm thinking that this picture is going to have to be shrunk down pretty small to find these vanishing points. So I'm going to do that and we're going to figure it out. All right, so we have our right side. So technically, and not always, as we saw with the last picture, but if I put a straight line here, hopefully our um, third, but technically the second vanishing point of this picture will end up somewhere on that line. Only one way to find out. And there we go. So again, we have another um, vertical or slanted um, horizon line, which is fine. That's just, again, a camera angle kind of a thing. And we have our points far away from our picture again, which is what's helping to create the less distorted, <clears throat> but still following the rules of perspective three point. All right, so we have a vertical picture now. So we're thinking about this different, right? We're almost thinking about these as if they were like pyramids. So we have lines that are going up and meeting in the sky rather than the ground now. So I always think these pictures are fun because the buildings are literally just a giant arrow that's pointing exactly where the vanishing point is. Um, but we do have two other vanishing points in this picture because the buildings are going this way and then you also have the building going this way too. So let's see if we can find those vanishing points in there as well. So you guys can see, this is pretty much the closest we've gotten to a straight horizon line so far. We have our third vanishing point right there in the center. Um, and then we have our other one right here and right here. 
uh, meeting with these buildings, okay? This is, again, it's just adding to the realism of the picture instead of having all these windows being the same size. It's It just makes it easier to see if we zoom in, how this window is bigger. These are all small and like really, really close together. <clears throat> this is kind of what helps us to be able to find that perspective, right? So let's keep breaking down these references. Here we have a classic um, New York reference, right? I mean, when people think of skyscraper, at least in America, this is what we think of. And we have a pretty good angle here. I think I'm gonna have to shrink this down a little. And just to switch it up, let's find our two points first before we find our, our point going up into the sky. So we have a very, very far right um, second vanishing point there from our picture that is looking like this. Okay, so last thing we gotta find is that vanishing point up in the sky where it's all converging. This one you can really see that we had to launch those vanishing points way out to the sides. But again, I mean, I can keep saying it over and over and sound like a broken record, but this is just what helps us make things not look so distorted, right? You know, if we have a vanishing point and our building is literally right here, our building just ends up looking like some sort of triangle thing or like a pyramid rather than instead of like a building where it looks square. You know, so if you have it up there and your building's coming off of this line, it's gonna look a lot more real if it's a little further away. So these are why we're looking at these references, right? This is what we're trying to break down and learn. These, are, these pictures are really good for teaching us these things. So this is a really compact image. It, the horizon line exists on the image. So for once we don't have um, tailing off too far, um, vanishing points from the bottom because I can see the street but then the the skyscraper is higher than me so somewhere my horizon line on this picture is going to exist maybe somewhere around here but let's find out As you can see, we do have our two sides now. I'm pretty sure if I drew a straight line from them, they would be essentially just perfectly lined up. Let's see. Drop this down. And almost, almost, it still lives on a diagonal. Remember, perspective is a, it's a drawing tool trick, right? So it doesn't always mean that in the real world it works um, completely accurately. 
But to be honest, that's pretty dang close. If I turn off my ruler, you might not even be able to tell it's on a, on a slant. And again, that could just be the way the camera's being held. It could just be the city is built on a specific angle. Um, you never know. So let's go ahead and find our top three point here and get the city figured out. All right, so this is a pretty classic three-point perspective right here, which is really cool that it's a photo it's a photograph too, right? So we can see that these principles that we're learning do exist in the real world, and this is how we start to break them down. I think what this is kind of teaching us though is that we don't want our perspective points to exist on our page. Having a little distance from our vanishing points to our field of paper that we're working on, right, um, is it helps to create a sense of more realism. It allows for more room for depth, which at the end is the the goal for perspective, right? Um, and at the end of the day, it just creates something a little more realistic, a little more interesting and dynamic. So now that we looked at some photography, let's look at how some artists have handled three-point perspective as well and see if we can break down and figure out what they're doing in their pictures. All right, guys, so here we have a digital painting of um, a city from someone's imagination, I assume, or maybe it has reference from what looks like some sort of Renaissance Italian-ish kind of architecture um, mixed with a little bit of whatever it might be, sci-fi or, you know, who knows if this is on Earth or whatever kind of planet, right? <clears throat> but none of that really matters because we're trying to break this down in terms of perspective. And I can already see that this person went for First off, exaggerated, which works in an illustration, of course, right? Um, that's where we get to play. That's what we get to do. So we can really see where our horizon line is. It exists right there at the bottom of the page. And our vanishing point at the top isn't too off the page either, because you can really see these lines right here almost pointing directly to that vanishing point, right? So let's go ahead and figure it out. What are some things we're noticing? First off, we're noticing that some of these buildings have a bit of a curb to them. And I think that's the artist's way of kind of exaggerating how much in the foreground it is that our, our viewpoint is being skewed and they're kind of forcing that skew on us. Another thing too, you guys might notice that these some of these lines are not actually lining up with the, um, the perspective line that we're bringing down. Now this doesn't necessarily mean that the artist didn't use the perspective. In fact, it kind of means the opposite. It's the artist is here is comfortable with the three point perspective, figured out roughly where the vanishing point is, and then just kind of organically drew um, his or her lines down, right? Whoever the artist is. So this is one of the benefits of learning perspective is learning how to skew it to be your own and how you don't have to go and set up as something you know, like a huge setup with paper everywhere every time you do it. Don't get it wrong. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't learn how to do the setup. So let's see if we can go ahead and find if these lines are also leading to the other perspective points. So clearly we can see on this side of the page, it's in terms of perfect perspective, it's a mess. But does that matter? If I turn this off, you guys really can't tell that these aren't going to a vanishing point. In the artist's head when they were drawing this, they knew that this window was gonna be here. This one had to be going a little more slanted. This one about somewhere in the middle, right? All of these things, they were thinking about 
what they know about perspective and then freehanding it. So again, what they were doing doesn't fit in the standards of perfect perspective, but it does come, it stems from the idea that they learn three-point perspective and now they're using it in terms of a quicker freehand, right? So just for sake of finishing this picture off, let's find the perspective on the other side and we'll move on from there. that's as far as I'll take it for this one. As you can see, again, same kind of unsure of vanishing point on the right side. But again, you know, I turn this layer off. And from my point of view, I don't really, I don't focus on it. I don't see it. I don't think that the perspective is so off that it comes out to me. And I think, again, that's just kind of this artist exercising. It could have just been a practice. Maybe it's just a quick small panel of a comic. Who knows what it is? but it's just the artist just kind of throwing it down, using what they know, but not spending too much time gritting it out, um, but using the knowledge that they learned from when they were gritting it out in the beginning, right? So let's look at another illustration. All right, so we have a really beautiful interior here, and you can see just because I'm looking at this V shape here, we are dealing with three-point perspective. So three-point perspective is not just for exterior shots of buildings but it can also take place when you're doing th something from like a bird's eye view of the interior of a room, <clears throat> like in this case, or it could be from a worm's eye view from the bottom floor of a room looking up too, right? Whenever you're trying to really exaggerate what's going on, that's what we're gonna start using is that three point perspective. So let's see if we can break this picture down. All right, so pretty pretty lined up pretty well. I would say that this artist definitely had a visual representation of where that vanishing point is. So again, let's kind of go in and see if we can find those two points here, um, see how far they exist off the page. So yeah, I, this picture um, definitely follows the rules of perspective. They probably have their perspective points laid out, um, at least a very rough idea, and they're following it pretty structurally. Um, again, great illustration to look at, such great detail. Let's look at a few more things. I think they have a few more th interesting pictures of where you might not know three-point perspective exists. All right, I'm going to be a little bit looser with the breakdown of this one because we can pretty much see this picture is showing us our vanishing point, at least our main vanishing point. So we already know that our third perspective point, right, it's literally right there. Um, and then, of course, everything's coming up from there. You know, you have these lines leading down there as well. This line's going down there. This line's going down there. And so we can see that this can be used 100% for exaggerated purposes. They're literally showing us this picture like this house or a birdhouse or whatever it might be is sitting so high above the earth that you can actually see the plains of ground, right? The farmlands and all that stuff. And everything is kind of converging down to that vanishing point. And then of course you have your simple vanishing points that exist out to here. And 
out this year, just like so. So it, again, I just wanted I wanted to show these pictures because it doesn't have to be so uh, structured, so city-like, and also it can be used for fun things. This stuff is used all the time in material that we digest without even knowing it. So, for instance, transformers, right? Robots, they're built up of many, many cube shaped, right? So they, people who draw these, the artists that draw uh, Transformers comics, Transformers cartoons, the CGI artists, they all have to have such a really in-depth understanding of perspective. So first off, we, we have this clearly making this point like right here, right? We know that the vanishing point is somewhere pretty much right there. All of these lines are suggesting that. We don't even need to know that. But what other information is this giving us? It's also letting us know how to draw um, these robots in perspective too. You see how they're, they're technically smaller here and then they're getting wider and wider, right? And that is perspective. That's the um, perspective of looking up at something. It's something that's used in movies and stuff all the time that gives stuff a more grand scale. People are drawing robots and they want them to see very seem very grand and huge, right? <clears throat> like Transformers are supposed to be. And then even still, the perspective, the two-point perspective doesn't go away either. Right? You can see that the artist is still considering those lines as well. Right? And then even going this way. These pictures, I can guarantee you, these artists are not probably drawing out what I would say is a traditional perspective grid because they're having to draw these pictures all the time and these robots in many, many different angles and stuff. But they have such an already deep understanding of the picture. Um, another place this is used a lot, comic books. So excuse the bad quality of the picture here, but um, you guys can see this is a very cheated picture for sure. I wouldn't say that this follows any strict rules other than it, it might know where its perspective point is up here. And again, they're using this with a purpose. These lines, they're all leading us right, right, right to Spider-Man because he's our focal point. We need to see Spider-Man is having this interaction with Deadpool and he's the one that we need to be focusing on in this picture. Maybe the tables have turned, maybe Deadpool was kind of knocking him out and then all of a sudden Spider-Man got the, the upper hand, right? So now this, the focus is on him and these the building's secondary information. Of course, it's a Marvel comic. We know we're in New York, we have buildings all around us, um, but the artist is also using their knowledge of three-point perspective to point us right at Spider-Man. Everything is like saying, look, at this man here <laughs> so it's just it just goes to show that this exists in all different facets and understanding it to its basic maybe boring but technical level is going to allow you to later understand it and use it and cheat it in your work without even having to think so much about it the last example is again removing the idea that we have to do just perspective on buildings it also exists on people because we also add dynamic feelings to our pictures involving people, right? We, the, I want to feel that this guy is huge and intimidating, right? Um, I want to know that I'm looking below him. How does, how does, how can someone enforce that? How can an artist enforce that? The three point perspective of like, you know, knowing this, this is more of a one point perspective, but if he were to stand more on a three quarter, then we'd have his sides as well, right? What are his shoulders doing? Where's his, where's the side of his waist going? Just like in this guy right here. So we're looking at this man with a top hat from a bird's eye view. So we're flying above him <clears throat> and we're getting this perspective down here, right? So again, very important to know this exaggeration of like his shoulders are gonna be much wider than his feet base. Even though if I was looking at him straight straight on, his where his feet are and his shoulders are probably gonna be right underneath each other, right? In terms of weight balance. But here we have the perspective of our two our three point coming back. Okay. Where it's also helping us to realize that there's less shoulder here, more shoulder here. 
um, depending on what side of the body we're flying over, right? So his midline is somewhere down here. Um, this is all stuff that can come off as kind of confusing if you don't understand the, the basic perspective principles of it, right? So even in cartoons, guys, this stuff exists. It's This is the reason we know it. I know it's technical. I know it can be sometimes boring or dry. Um, but I really highly encourage that you guys find some references for yourself, print them out, draw all over them, print out illustrations of perspective drawings that you see too. Draw all over those, figure out what the artists are doing. Are they sticking super tightly to the perspective or are they just eyeballing it? Does that work to you? Is it believable? You know, ask yourself these questions. Um, be critical with people's art. Not to be mean, but just so that you can break it down and see what you like and what you don't like personally. Um, I hope this is all pretty helpful, guys. Next time what we're going to do is we're going to use our references that we gathered. Um, you can find new references too. And we're going to create our own three-point perspective drawing. Okay, So find some references, save them to your computer, print them out, whatever you have to do, at least two or three, and have them ready to go for next week. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.